This aircraft has two afterburning turbofan engines to conduct a wide range of tasks. It can go 1,860 miles at a top speed of 1,430 miles per hour at 55,800 feet. It is a land-based derivative of Russia's Su-27 and will be installed on Admiral Kuznetsov, Russia's sole aircraft carrier. So why is the Su-33 Flanker D considered the most awful fighter and a terrible failure? Why does the Russian government want to retire it? Why can it never beat the US F-15 even if it's supposed to? Be sure to stick around and keep watching as we unveil the answers to these questions. Despite their similar looks, the Su-33 Flanker D differs significantly from the Su-27 in terms of functionality, having a stronger undercarriage and more advanced landing gear, as well as wing canards, folding wings, and a bigger wing surface. Landing gear, folding wings, a bigger wing area, and the engine have all been updated according to the newest aircraft carriers, keeping their limited space and short runways in mind. In terms of weapons, the Flanker has a 30mm GSH-31 cannon and can carry a broad variety of munitions on its external hardpoints, including R27R1 ER1, R27T1 ET1, S8KOM, S80M, S8BM, and RBK500 cluster bombs. The Su-33's inability to carry some of the most critical artillery, especially for air-to-ground missions, has rendered the fighter an unqualified success at best and a complete failure at worst because of this fact. Although it has been marked as a multi-role fighter, the flanker's primary role is to maintain air supremacy. Although its use has been limited, the events that occurred when the Su-33 was in use have been terrible. At least three of the 35 built have been lost in accidents since their debut in 1999, one of which occurred during a Russian air show in the summer of 2001. The fighter's main goal of integrating with the Admiral Kuznetsov has also encountered difficulties. The Su-33 disaster forced Russia's military to order the whole Kuznetsov fleet to return to port. Su-33 Exportation Russia seems to be attempting to recover costs on the Su-33 by developing an export variant. The People's Republic of China apparently explored using the aircraft for its fledgling aircraft carrier program, which is fitting given that the first People's Liberation Army Navy or planned carrier Liangning was the former Varyag, Admiral Kuznetsov's sister ship. After talks with China fell through, India explored using the Su-33 for its own old Soviet carrier, the INS Vikramaditya, but ultimately chose the more compact MiG-29K. Beijing has made it quite clear that it stands by its judgment. Recently, Chinese military analysts praised the capabilities of the locally made Shenyang J-15 fighter, essentially a clone of the Su-33 based on a Ukrainian prototype. The Chinese officials' comments came after Russian military specialists said that the Su-33 outperformed the Chinese aircraft in terms of tactical performance. A Chinese specialist replied, Information equipment has massive design problems. When compared to China's current J-15 fighter, the Su-33 is clearly behind and the J-15's electrical system is superior to the Su-33. From Su-33 to the MiG-29K in light of these problems, the Russian Navy is considering replacing many of its current 30-35 Su-33 aircraft with Mikoyan MiG-29Ks. They may not be as fast or have as much range, but these planes are equipped with much more powerful weapons of ground attack missiles and guided bombs than the Su-33. Low observability technology and an enhanced radar system are among the features of the MiG-29 arsenal. In addition, the MiG has been reduced in size and weight to fly from a carrier. The plane also has cheaper costs of construction and maintenance. Su-33's Expansion Prospects Despite various reports that Russia is upgrading its Su-33 fleet, it's difficult to predict the aircraft's future. In light of the Admiral Konstantsov's ongoing issues and the arrival of the MiG-29K, the aircraft may be permanently out of service. A major Russian sea power icon won't be ready for at least another two years due to a setback. Now, Russia's only aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, which was put in a dry dock in 2011 for much-needed modifications, is expected to return to service in 2024 at the earliest. If all goes according to plan, Kuznetsov should be able to continue serving for another 10 to 15 years. According to TASS, Russia's state-owned media agency, Kuznetsov's return to the sea has been postponed for the past four years, 
so this isn't all that surprising. There are approximately 58,000 tons of cargo on board the Admiral Kuznetsov when it is completely loaded. 24 Su-33 Flanker D and MiG-29 jets and six helicopters might be stored on board the ship. During the most recent patrols, 10 Su-33s and 5 MiG-29s were observed. The Russian air superiority aircraft Sukhoi Su-33, NATO reporting Flanker D, can attack enemy aerial targets, provide fire support, and take part in ground and sea operations with missiles or rocket bombs. As a result, it might be used as an escort or spy vehicle. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, a conventional takeoff and landing CTOL fighter was ultimately put into service following its initial flight in 1985. It took until 1999 for the final Su-33 to enter service after a modest production run of 35 aircraft. The F-15 Eagle was the inspiration for the development of the Su-27 Flanker. However, the truth was far more complex. The Sukhoi Su-27 was the Soviet Union's answer to the F-15 Eagle in the early 1970s. Initially, the Su-27 was conceived as an air superiority fighter. In 1969, Sukhoi began designing the T-10 fighter with the goal of developing an agile and long-range fighter. The aircraft was built with fly-by-wire or FBW control in mind from the beginning. There was a delay of nearly two years before the first flying prototype of this plane was successfully tested. The T-10 had to be reworked from the ground up because of a number of major flaws in the prototype. As a completely reworked model, the T-10S1 debuted in 1981. Su-27, NATO reporting name Flanker B, is a single-seat, multi-purpose fighter and was built in 1982 and entered service in 1985. Later, the two-seat Su-27UB, NATO reporting name Flanker C, was introduced. By the end of the Cold War, less than 400 Su-27s were built for the Soviet Air Force, comprising both aircraft variants. The Flanker remained the Russian Air Force's main fighter in the 1990s and early 2000s, even after the Soviet Union disintegrated in late 1991. Beijing began producing a licensed version of the Russian-built planes after supplying the PLA with about 80 of them. As a result, 95 single-seat J-11s, a derivative of the Su-27 that was reverse-engineered, were manufactured. This angered Russia greatly. The Su-27 has long been hailed as one of the most effective air superiority fighters ever created. There are presently several Su-27s flying over the Ukrainian airspace. A reboot? Some Su-33 fighters are supposedly being modified with a better engine, an enhanced detecting system, and other as yet unspecified modifications to make them more viable as multi-role fighters. The scope and date of that upgrade package is unknown. The Su-33's service future and the future of Russian naval aviation in general is closely intertwined with Russia's sole aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, which is undergoing repairs and a comprehensive refurbishing following two tragic mishaps in recent years. The Kuznetsov's upgrade is said to include a more reliable flight deck capable of fielding the latest Su-33 and MiG-29K types. But does the Su-33 really need an upgrade or should this fighter be retired for good? Compared to the F-15, the Su-33 Flanker D is significantly inferior in various respects, including its weaponry, its flight speed, and other current equipment. The Russian government is dissatisfied with the aircraft and plans to phase it out of service at some point in the not-too-distant future. Will the Russian government retire the Su-33 or modernize it in the future? If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for regular military updates. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching.